Okay, we now have a quorum. So I will call our meeting to order. Um, I assume everybody has had the agenda and has, has no uh, objection or proposed changes to what's in the agenda. And I'll move right to abatement hearings. And the first abatement request you have is uh, Georgia Goldsboro. So Georgia, why don't you step up? Maybe you wait at the end so you can, so people can, and so people can see you, yeah. Yeah. It came. No, the information, her information would be in the book. That the stuff that you got from me today is basically worksheets to go through and make the decisions. Okay, Georgia, would you? Raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm, subject to the pains and penalties of perjury, that the testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Okay. Why don't you have a seat and tell us uh, why you're here? Okay. Um. Um, I'm not sure of the language of a request for tax abatement, but um, I'm here to request a um, reduction in my property taxes. I uh, might, yeah. So I purchased the property in on the 31st of July this year. Um, I closed on my property a little mini farm in White River Junction on the 31st of July. And um, at that point, when I owned my little acre and two thirds in White River Junction, I mean, Hartford actually, um, I had received a, um, the, um, what's it called? Um, I'm some sort of tongue tied right now. Mm -hmm. Homestead declaration, um, quite a reduction based on my income and um, my circumstances. And um, when it moved me to come to Montpelier, I had lived here 26 years. I worked for the Governor's Institute on the Arts. I um, really loved the city here, but um, life, family, et cetera. When I decided to sell my little farm and move here, my one daughter got a job at uh, Main Street School. She's the chorus and a music teacher there. She had my one grandchild born on April 1st. And I was at that time, the one parent an hour and 15 minutes away and I was diagnosed with cancer at the same time. Um, Jules was born on April 1st and I was operated on April so I got to meet him and see him, and that was part of the recovery. Um, I jumped into this move pretty quickly and, and you know, saw it all the way through the mud and know, knew that the barn on 12 North College Street needed a lot of work. Um, and I decided to put every single thing I had into the barn. And at the very last moment, that right down to the actual purchase and sale going through the closing, my lawyer um, warned me about the taxes and did tell me that I would possibly be able to come and have request a hardship. Um, I live on, well, I have all the paperwork and I realize it will become public record that I have um, a small social security amount that I live on and I do receive some uh, state supplement and I do receive um, a seasonal fuel. Uh, my plan, I am an artist, I am a professional artist, and I do have um, plans that have been some verbally approved by zoning, by calling Aubrey and speaking with him about what I do, that I as a person residing in the barn can have my own business there. And what I intend to do are three things with the building. One is to um, show my work and have small openings of, with my own of my own work 
there, but also build a, an apartment, just a small supplemental income based apartment that already was an existing apartment on the ground, below the ground floor. And then ultimately the next plan is to try to return some of the huge amount of real estate that does exist in the barn to the city by and working on obtaining a grant to uh, create practice space for musicians, for theater groups. And I'm not going to say moving into fine arts because I'm a fine artist and I have that temperament and I'm not sure that I want to share that temperamentally with other fine artists. I am obtaining a, I, I've been pre-approved for a HELOC loan to, um, thank you, David, who came to my door at 10 a.m. on the second day I had moved in there. I am looking to replace the roof, take down the chimney, cap the chimney, create this apartment, and finish painting the two facades that were in pretty rough shape when I first got there. I've done, put $100,000 of my own cash money into it, and I'm cleaned out and, and it's created a whole new heating system. I've used the existing walls. I have not compromised the posts and beam. I've grown, I've, this will be the first fourth barn that I have actually lived in. And this is the biggest, most ambitious enterprise. Um, so I have a phone call conversation with Bev Hill that based on this, the results of this hearing tomorrow, I have to I do owe some taxes. I do actually owe the last installment back tax because that tax bill actually got sent to the previous owner. Um, and I can only remember at the moment his EFF, his Stouffer. Yeah, Stouffer, Eric Stouffer. And um, so she's waiting to hear the results of this hearing. What I will do then tomorrow is go and pay the back piece and then what it is that I do owe. So I am asking for an abatement. I am in a um, financially in a hardship time. I am, I have every intention of getting through it. And um, I do have all my records of my medical diagnosis. The every six months, a recent review in October, I'm good. I have one coming up March 6th. Um, and um, yeah, so I'm, I'm also, you know, I've got medical bills, but that's not part of it. I am, I am working on a um, an application for some. It's starting with Hitchcock and my doctors, Doctor Sarah Mayo there, and and um, working around some financial assistance that I'm I'm planning and should receive and have received in the past. So that's basically all the circumstances of my entire life that I can talk about, <laughs> and I do have. Um, as I said, documentation backing up what I have to say to you. Thank you. Um, so are you, to be, to be clear, did you uh, buy the property for cash and, uh, and that essentially consumed the, your available funds that you, some of which you might've been using to pay for property taxes if you hadn't done that? Well, I, I um, did pay for, I did sell my house and did pay cash and put everything I could. We ran into, of course, as usual, to be expected, but about $15,000 more dollars of one of the main things was the rodent infestation that had compromised all of the insulation, all of it, every bit. And it had to be removed at a great cost. And I felt feel lucky to have it to have been discovered by this great contractor and his partner and getting it in time because now I've got um, four feet of cellulose cleaned out, new troughs put in in the upstairs, brand new heating system, two bathrooms. One is a private one, and then one is near the entranceway for when I go through, hopefully, Vermont Council on the Arts or whoever to work on the grant. There will be that facility already exists. Um, the design for that exists, and the design for the apartment does also is also intact. Um, the taxes I did, I, you know, I did run up my credit cards to run over, of course, the budget. I'm not, I'm not afraid of it. This is the, the business of, you know, the real estate world. Sorry, Tim, I know that I looked at your other barn, but um, 
yeah, so it it did it did run considerably over, and I did run into the heating system and didn't actually move in until, um, well, whenever it was the night before you came to my door, I think it was December twenty second, and so you know I've been hit very 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 hard by the cost of heating and fuel for the winter and the electric. It, it, I'm very lucky the infrastructure was there for all of those, the G Green Mountain Power, the septic, the water, the hookup, but you know, had to run the ropes of finding out all of its various costs mm -hmm. and um, permits. And so it's 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 run over the budget by about 30,000. Rosie. What will you do to pay the taxes if the contract is completed? Like, what what will that mean that you need to do or can't do? What what will it mean I can or can't do? Um, well, it will mean that I will run up my credit card, you know, even more, and um, try to juggle Peter, PayPal, and all that for. Um, and and I'm waiting to hear the results too because I do have to put that finite you know number down on the application for the HELOC. Um, what will I do? Yeah, um, that I don't have the resources to borrow personal loans, but you know I do have credit cards. And it, are you telling us that what you expect is that though you haven't had enough money to pay the in, enough income to pay the property taxes this year, the things you're doing, like creating an apartment in the building, are going to be enough so that in the as of next year your income will be changed and and you'll then be able to pay the taxes. Yes, and also I did pay the taxes up through. The, the the past bill that got sent to the wrong address when at closing thought that I had paid through February and there was a little mishap and a part that didn't partial part that didn't get paid went to Irik Stouffer. Um and so am I answering the question? Well, am I off the top? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to figure topic? out. So yeah. So what is not paid? Uh, the February bill, which was due last week, didn't get paid. The November bill is are you saying that part of it got paid in, in at the closing and part of it didn't get paid up, up to the November bill has been paid okay. and then um and I don't have the bill in front of me I did get the bill from Sarah but I um I don't see it so what I what my understanding is is that part of the bill for there was a, some kind of an accounting error. So part of the the bill right up to November did get paid. Um, and it looked to me like part of November got paid, but I owe all of what's owed in February now. And then I think- And then the main and then, also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you describe your house? Here is it exactly number 12. Are you the barn? I'm the barn. You're the person that knocked on my door at 10 a.m. the morning after I'd moved in. I remember one yeah. And came, came and asked me what I was going to do about the roof. And I was. <laughs> so you're, you're trying to get an apartment uh, ready to rent. Yes. And and I, I do have a contractor um, ready to go April 1st. And it is a, um, it will be just a one room, very nice, efficient apartment on next to the boiler room on the ground very ground floor where there were pre initially stalls in the barn so when you walk up to the door of the barn there are two doors and one is on the right and it goes down the stairs and that's already intact and then there's the boiler room it has new walls and all and then it's framed out the apartment and it's been I mean zoning has been through and walked through and has given my contractor, I don't know if I want to say his name, but pre-approval for the plan is and the stairs that exist and what and the window and door that are there. And the rodent problem wasn't uh, was disclosed it? at the time you bought them? No, it wasn't a, a it was not a recent problem. It was an old right. yeah, insulate problem. Yeah. It was not disclosed. So um, have you applied for the 
long yet? Yes. You have a podcast? Yes. You haven't heard it? Oh, well, I I got a place called a pre-approval, mm -hmm. but then I had to withdraw that and starting over again because I needed some documentation. I need to, to tell them exactly what my taxes are, exactly a couple other things that That's I- the, uh, the news, is the, is the apartment within the barn structure or is it the outside? No, it's within the barn it's structure, the but it has its own doorway, entranceway. And is it, yeah. do you have a permit for it to build it? I don't have the permit in hand to build it, but the inspectors have been through and they walked through and, and the permit has not been applied for until the start date and when it's going to begin, which I hope is April 1st. Hope to be April 1st. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so I can ask you or Marty, but I'm looking at the, your property card and it looks like there's three so three units on one floor yeah. plus an attic and a basement. And, I think and so it's listed as three units, but you're going to add two more to make it five? No, there's only one unit in the building. So just four? There aren't four. There's one, one. now. And there okay. will be two. And I, I think what you might be looking at is is Stouffer's application to put in condom or it's, something. It's our... I don't have... It's have a city's one. property card record. I don't know. Maybe I'm not looking at it and, and in that angle. And There's in your one. narrative, I thought you said um, a larger number of units. But maybe, I'm saying that, okay. Maybe I could clarify a little bit. Do you know what the answer? I could explain that to the guardian. So there's uh, 6,600 square feet in the building. And the apartment, there was nothing. The um, previous owner took it back to the post and beam bare walls, took everything out. The infrastructure for the water and sewage, then the Green Mountain Power and all that stayed there. There were no walls, zero, where I moved in, except. And I applied for a permit um, in 22, 1022 to convert it to a condo. And then you had another, and maybe this is your permit, last year, October, uh, August of 23, to rehab the inside of it. That would be my yes. And, and, and has, that, has that work been completed? That's been completed. Okay. So it's now a single family. Right. According to this. Yeah. Okay. So you have your pre-approval, you want your approval documentation? No, I don't. I, I, and what I meant to say is I did get the doc, I did get that and it applied a couple of weeks ago and was, and I have it probably on my laptop, but I withdrew that application to reapply because I only had three days and they wanted absolutely every, you know, nut and bolt here. And so this is one and there are a couple others just to prove that obviously my income level can, and then the apartment, the income from that will support the loan. Basically, and I and I have I'm confident of that. I mean, I've done this before. I was a landlord of an inn in South Royalton, Vermont, for 15 years, and I rehabbed. I, I would like to say renovated, but I honestly was rehabbed to to accommodate Vermont Law School students. So I I I do know the business a little bit, and sale of that bought my little farm in 2019. Um, and so, yeah, anyway, I, I think that might not be relevant. I, I, my, I'm having some issues trying to understand the number without any documents of what your income is, what your expenses have been, uh, you know, so do you have any of that written down anywhere? Yeah. What, what are you looking for? Your income and your expenses, which you bought the house and then whatever renovations to put it in proportion. Do I need to um, produce? I mean, you're asking for something as a harsh, a financial I, hardship. I'm, I'm having a hard time understanding I, I, what you're I asking. I thought you were asking abatement because of financial hardship. Yeah. And for me, that means I look at numbers. Yeah. Maybe other people don't, but. I have my, I, I just have my personal um, income records right here. And I understand that whatever I give you becomes public record, correct? Well, you can tell us what your income is and what your expenses are. And we can add it up. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, my income is 936 per month, 
Social Security, $290 from, um, that would be, I'm not sure what it's called, but it's department, it's assistance for low income. So that's 290 and that includes a medical piece for that. And then $600, of, it's an alimony separation okay. amount from my husband. These monthly payments? Yes. $936 Social Security, $600 support, and $290 for it. $600 for what? Where does the $600 come from? It's from my husband. Alimony. Alimony. Oh, so $1826? Yep, $1826. Okay. And you know roughly what your monthly expenses are? And I would say roughly my monthly expenses at this point are 1800 mm -hmm. And at this point, you don't have a house payment? No, I do not. Okay. And that, that, that includes insurance. Um, there's, there's obviously a spot there for taxes, um, utilities, been hit, as I said, pretty hard with, as I did put a whole new heating system in, um, did not rebuild the chimney, did not put in um, any kind of wood stove. So it's a new to me, all propane, an NTI new propane heating system. Mm -hmm. Very, very warm, very nice, very tight, but, um, and then electric and um, food costs and and fuel. Anybody have any other questions? Okay, I can drive. Sorry, I guess. Well, I'm going to that she's a near neighbor of mine. And that property had become a nuisance, in my opinion, as a result of the negligence of the city to enforce the zoning code. And the reality was that it was, before she bought it, it was owned I think it had been fallen into foreclosure. Yes, but, it said that it And it was um, populated by, uh, shall we say, homeless and many uh, misbehaving folks who allowed the rodents to come in there and become a real nuisance. So part of her problems, in my opinion, are due to the in action of the city over many years and allowed that property to actually become a nuisance to the neighbors. Um, the reason I asked about the disclosure at the time of the sale, um, I don't know what the cost of that remediation was, but it had to be considerable. 13,000 and something, and I can provide documentation, but I don't have it right now. But that was the that was the unexpected and, and that was a surprise. That was the undisclosed surprise. Yeah, there were some surprises that it didn't really pass the um, the scope. Did did a sewer scope? It there was a kink in that, um, and there were a lot of things that I um, I did overlook myself. But and then the roof I knew was as you brought up the first moment. It is um, a 50 year roof. It is a metal roof. It has, it needs to be painted every 10 years. It's been painted twice. It, it It's not in disrepair in that it's leaking. It's unsightly. I've painted two facade, two, well, one and a half facades of the building um, because it, a lot of the sills were, which I could see were also rotting. So to come up and say, well, here was the budget and here's how much I had. And it was 26, 
thousand seven hundred dollars more than my budget, and that ran up my credit cards. But uh, in my in the scheme of things, my situation looks like a, a wonderful little apartment with a beautiful view. I'm I'm a kind of a landscaper, and I do best with trees better than with people almost. I have a little horse and a goat and um, they're in the stall. That stall has been built. That's inside. It's a run-in. I put up a fence for them. The neighbors do seem to love it. The, the, they come over. Um, but I have the feeling from everybody in my neighborhood of, on especially College Street, extreme gratitude that I am there and did it. I did fall in love with the barn. I did know that it had a problem. I knew I was going in over my head in, in, in certain respects, but I think it was the rodent infestation. I would like it to have been disclosed. I don't know what that would have, at this point, you know, 2020 hindsight would have done, um, but it was uninhabitable ultimately once I really did see what what it was. Um, it is completely sealed up now. There is no way that anything larger than really a mouse can get in there. I haven't seen any. I do have a cat. I do believe in the structure of that barn. I just absolutely believe in it. I believe that knowing my background as artist, as um, someone who is run performance spaces and had a lot of hand in the arts in my entire life in Vermont and mostly growing up in the Champlain Valley. I do believe that space can be brought back a little bit to the city. And I can't just say, here's what I'm going to do, but I know I can't, it, it's, the space exists. And I have talked to Kim Bent very briefly about you know what kind of practice space Lost Station Theater might have. I know a lot of performing artists, um, and you know, from that world, are always looking for places to practice. There is a center space within the space that's just asking to be um, a place for musicians and artists to per to practice. It's just there. It exists. So. Did you have any representation in this transaction? Yes, I did. For real estate? Who, what's that? Did you have a rent? Was there someone for real estate? Yes, I did. Yes. Did. Yeah. And they didn't know about the condition of the property or the roads. That didn't show up. It did it's, not show up anywhere. And it wasn't until the contractor and I were standing in one specific space and we just um, realized. And another question. With the renovations that you've made to this, it's going to affect your assessment next year. Right. Have you thought about that going forward? Yeah, I have thought about that. And what I guess I feel strongly about is that, that if I'm living on this latitude of income outgo, that the apartment will pay for the, the utilities and the taxes, essentially. So this is not the assessment, the most recent assessment, or is it well, assessment? that's for this the, is before before the construction. Yeah. So that has a gutted property. The equity loan will be based on the on, a, on an appraisal, like it's at the bank's doing. Yeah. Six hundred dollars. So why can't the why can't the um equity loan reimburse you for some of the unexpected construction expenses and and you use some of the cash to pay the sure. full tax bill. See, I think that's a really good question. And I, but I've just been, I've kind of been, it's been a year of, of overreach, a little overreach in this building. And, um, and also, I think when you get, when you when you get cancer, you know you suddenly see, you know what do I want to do with this this gift the, the rest of my beautiful life? What do I want to do? do? I want a barn in Montpelier, Vermont, my favorite city in the world. I've lived in all over the world. I would like to be near my daughter and my grandchild, and I'd like to do something in the world of the arts. Um, and it just became just crystal clear, and this is what I'm doing. It's the overreach is, um, it's caused some sleeplessness, 
but I know that there is a need for housing in this place. I do not want to build condos, other apartments, but I do believe that there is a way to um, bring income in through through the use of rental um, practice space. And I think I'm just, I have a lot of wide variety of knowledge and, and expertise in that world. And I think that this is just the city of the arts. So I'm, I'm excited, I'm hopeful, but I am, I am, I have overextended. Yes. Um, I think you mentioned that you had income sensitivity on your prior property. Um, and I assume that one of the problems is that you don't have income sensitivity from the state on this property. Yeah. Oh, that, okay. That's a Can really good point. Tell us what your income sensitivity was on the prior property. Yeah. Um, it's it is. I think I, I turned that sheet over to Sarah. It's, uh, it's one of the yeah. It is? But that was based on the property down in record. Are they at all equivalent? It's also based on a homestead income of 10 to. And, and um, truth be told, I had put, um, I purchased that property in 2019 and I, Purchased it. I don't know how much it disclosed, but I I put a hundred thousand into that. So when I did sell that property, I did get the money that I had put into it, and I knew that all of it was going to go to the barn by then, mm -hmm. this barn. So um, I I knew I had missed the um, homestead declaration period, and that was troublesome. Except that. I guess, you know, with some looking into it and my lawyer, Jeffrey D. Lewis of South Royalton, Vermont, was pretty clear that, you know, I would have just cause to go to an abatement hearing. Here so I this am. year you'll be filing your taxes and you'll be filing the homestead declaration. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But that'll and be based on the old valuation of the new valuation? At present, because that's what the current valuation is. Yeah, it's going. It's going to go up on April first. Assessment. That's all. It's going to what? I can't hear. I, it this. looks your assessment is probably going to go up based on renovations that you. Oh, doing, I know. Because it's now it's literal space. Right. Yeah, which it was not before. Yeah. Anyone else have any other questions? Could you repeat what you just said really clearly? Because I'm having a hard time hearing. Wait. The the assessment on your property. Yeah. Now that it's habitable. Yes. Is going to go up. Yes. Yeah. But there was something else you said. I just. Didn't I didn't know when when are the assess April first. Oh yeah. Every year. <clears throat> yeah. Tim, you look like you're just a quick question. So for the apartment that you're gonna plan on for income, so have you budgeted or planned for the permitting costs to get that? Because you know you have to get a wastewater permit if you're out in the unit and you have to pay a hookup fee. Yeah, and there's um, fees that go with that. It's not just a part. No, I did have the the inspector. The you know the the um Aubrey came in twice. Yeah. My um contractor. I think what how it's worked is we're going to use the heating system that's there. All of the and well, that's where any extra fees like two hundred twenty five dollars for permit. No, I'm I'm not afraid of those permit costs. Well, except that. It, you can't pay bills now and you have these other surprise fees. How are you going to? I didn't that? say that I can't. I mean, I'm talking about I'm budgeting 40000 for the apartment, that includes the fees, and that's what I'm going for. The, it's the walls are built, and the heating system is there, the windows are there, and it's, um, yeah, so we did some of the, the scary work, and it's a beautiful space ready for sheetrock walls and the kitchen and the, and I have bathroom fixtures. I have many, many fixtures and it's going to be furnished. So. Okay. Anyone else? Are we ready to start uh, deliberating on this question? No, so I don't want to cut anyone off. Did I answer your question? I didn't feel like I get, did do you, no, are you satisfied? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so the, uh, the taxpayer has 
come in with a request for an abatement based on an assertion that she cannot afford to pay the uh, the taxes. And so is is there a motion of any kind or is, or is there any discussion on the request? I'll move that we grant the application. For how much of it? Well, for this, uh, I guess for the first uh, tax bill, that's what she's asking. I don't know. Sorry. February tax bill? Order, order, help me out. I didn't get any amounts. No, there isn't a paperwork. No. Did you say you'd already paid some of the taxes for this year? First, my understanding is I'm paid up through November. And it's November and February. It's, yeah, that's the. Okay. And your quarterly payments are 134037, it looks like. Yeah. Can you see on the paper you have, um, because I could be, I could miss, have a misunderstood. Is there a partial payment of the November? Oh, you don't get that. Okay. So there was an, I think there was an accounting error, but I, I do know I owe tomorrow the, you know, the February tax bill. Are you asserting an accounting error on the city's part? No, 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 on my, on my, on the closing costs. She's in the and I guess I I prefer you to go to the bank now that you've got at least according to Mar Marty now that it's not gutted there's at least some added value you've put into the building so that ideally you could get some sort of a, a loan to help you and help you also with your taxes and and just even out all your obligations because you put everything down I mean you didn't leave yourself any leeway. Well, I, I I hear what you're saying. Um, that is going forward. I am in a hardship place, and I don't really feel ashamed of that at all. I feel proud of what I'm doing. Very, very, very proud. I do think that it's hard to bear one's um, you know soul and books in a situation like this. I think that there was a part of me that leapt very you know a little bit. Heart. I think it was getting sick. I think it was being a grandparent with a 42 year old only child that wasn't going to happen. All of it happened so fast. I do think that um, had I known about a few of the things that I have run into, um, I don't I don't know. 20, I'm going to put everything I can into yeah. making it yeah. work based on the loan I'm getting. But I do need to tell you, you that my loan, monthly loan, excuse me, I think I was in the middle of yeah. trying to tell you that my monthly payments are going to be anywhere from uh, 370 something, depending on the length of time, to a thousand dollars per month, depending on what of the HELOC I use. So at this point with my accounting and my ex new uh, learned expertise and with some actually um, through my bank, which I really do love North Country Union, there is financial counseling on this. I'm not just flying blind right now. There's no, the back, there are back bills. It was very hard to figure out how to come up with $26,000 um, credit card bills based on the unforeseen. Kim, let me jump in here. Kim, so is your proposal, is your motion to abate the February and the May payments? Yes. Um, Just, I just I would like to see happen. I don't know exactly how to figure the numbers. She's clearly in over the day to me. If she gets a chance, maybe she can pull it out and we'll know that in uh, two or three months, I guess. So I think she needs, I think she's made a compelling case for somebody whose financial situation is such that um, she cannot reasonably afford the immediate tax bill. And that's my motion. Um, so if, I, if you were to say the February and uh, May installments, which is 
37 each is that does that reflect what your intention is yeah okay so that's the motion to abate the may and the february and may uh, installments is there a second I guess I'd like to have some more numbers on that. I mean, I, I agree with Donna on the, it seems like the, um, there's a lot of equity in this building now. Yeah. A lot of equity. And it's just a question of what can be afforded in a monthly payment. And without, without seeing numbers, I, I don't, I, I think it very well may be affordable to, to, to pay the taxes as well as uh, every, everything going forward. With with the proceeds of the could, could we, I have to say I agree also. Yeah. We could give an extended a payment so she doesn't have a late payment while she's working right. with the bank. Well, I'm going to be. I, I have been offered that anyway, which is the intention. I um I don't think with the HELOC a monthly payment with interest rate, even though my credit's very high in the seven hundreds. Um, I don't think that. I, I can't look at, okay, is, is the sky falling? Is the roof oh, going to be okay for two years? And then do I go get a loan or do I do it now? And I, I'm not used to the um, landlord, the, the cost of rental around here. I've been told and it, and I thought, well, why don't I take the low end of what, you know, a one bedroom apartment can get? Will that pay my taxes? The utilities, which just heat alone is $600 a month in that building. Um, what other numbers would you like? My, in my, um, I can tell you I'm on an average now already because I do do monthly with Green Mountain Power. Mm -hmm. I mean, and um, Bev Hill has offered that I will be able to do water and sewage and everything on a, on a payment plan. That's, that is what I do. I do that. I'm not trying to just get away with not paying taxes. I twin motion being the second on the clock. But I would move that we pass this and request the taxpayer to provide a detailed financial accounting of the situation, then we can review it another time. Is there a second for that motion? I'll second. Did you understand what the proposal what okay. the motion is? The motion is to not take action on your uh, request tonight to ask you for more information because people are feeling they don't have enough information about your income and expenses to be able to evaluate whether you're in a position of inability to afford your taxes. And so that's that's the motion before the or now, do you still need, want to be heard, John? Before we, I was going to make another motion, but if it, if this uh -huh. one doesn't, then I would put another. Okay, so in other words, tomorrow, I I have a bill due. Well, it, yes, let's take. Yeah, yeah. I think and, more motions coming. So hold on. Okay. <laughs> so is is there? Uh, are we ready to vote on Kim's motion? We didn't. No, he, 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 he. Oh, it was Kim later made a new motion. It's Kim's motion. Oh, yeah. 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 I second it. Okay. okay. The first motion died for lack. First motion died for lack of a second. So yeah. Kim's motion was take no action tonight. Come back. We know we have uh, a meeting probably uh, March 28th. Maybe it's definite already. Yeah, pretty much it. Uh huh. <laughs> and the documentation we're looking for is. Income. And, and, and like a list of the what's gone to what's gone into the pre approved loan letter, you know. Yeah. That, that. List of what I can you will this bit spelled out or do I have to reply? This is the motion. It okay. Ask, it's a request to you for a detailed uh, accounting of your income and your and your expenses. Okay. And, Not how much I put into the building. Right. It's really a matter. This isn't a question. The question is, what's your income and can you afford the taxes based on what your income is? And uh, and so. Well, I can't right now, but I will. Well, that, that's the plan. Yeah. Uh, right. And, that, and that's what you're saying. And people are are saying, well, you know, we'd like to see some. Uh, some evidence that you can so that they can make a decision on, okay. on the request. So, All right. So I tomorrow so I current income and expenses and then 
projected income and expenses based on okay. the apartment yep. setup. All right, I see what you're saying. I liked Kim's initial motion. <laughs> yeah. So is there any more discussion before we vote on Kim's motion? I think at some point I would entertain another uh, motion to remove any late fee while she's giving us, I don't know exactly when we'll meet again, John. Just... If if we obey, then the late fees will, will I mean, it might make more sense to make the quick we meet again, just because the okay. late fees would, would fold up. Whenever there's an abatement, okay. kind of these late fees go, or go with yeah. it. Okay. Thank you. And then if also, if, it's, if there's a decision, not to grant an abatement of the principal, you can then choose to. If that Thank point, you. Choose That's a procedural space. question. No, sorry, Georgia. So I, I need to understand what you, what you, you said. Okay. Could you Thank spell you. it out for me, please? I'm sorry. Yeah. Could you so um, the late fees? I um the late fees. Um, if if a abatement is granted later, then yeah. it'll take care of the late fees. Uh -huh. If an abatement is not granted later, then the body can still choose to specifically abate just the late fees. Okay. All right. Are we ready to vote on the motion? If so, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any aye. Opposed? aye. Did you say you oppose it? Yes. Okay, we got it because it's partial uh, a hybrid meeting. We got to take a roll call. Um, start with your end, uh, Tim. Aye. 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 Abstain. You say our name. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Say Donna. 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 Aye. 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 And uh, Carrie. No. And Bob. No. Okay. The motion, motion carries. Um, so thanks for coming in. That's where that's where you are now. Um, we haven't said no. We haven't said yes. But you have an opportunity to come back uh, with more information. And then is the information um, is it available if I offer it? Just in paper, or do I need to attend in person? What? How does it work? Schedule you for okay, you'll get another here. Get everything to us uh, to the clerk uh, uh, in writing in advance of that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because we uh, the members of the board do review what's submitted to us before the, uh, the meeting. And so it's helpful to have it. Okay. I, I, yeah, I wish I had done that before. I guess I think that this is my first ever abatement hearing. And I think it was a little unnerving knowing yeah. every piece of paper goes into public record. So I wasn't sure where, but this is okay. I can do it. Thank okay, very great. Much. Thanks for coming in. Okay. All right. Next up. Um, we don't see this person. Did you say Gonzalez Revilla? Oh, this is that one case. Yeah. This was the case um, where the person put in a request based on. No, I might suggest that if. She's not here. Maybe it just makes sense, less it. sense to put it on the ORCA as far as the, the, uh -huh. the reasoning, just, just that, for privacy purposes. Yeah, that's fine. some personal information. Um, yep. But what I would suggest is that we uh, get, give her a chance, get in touch with her and give her, give her a chance to come in to next time. Is that okay with everybody? Did she just, just jump in? Really? Just I didn't see any oh, who's no, that's Julia Watson. Oh, she's, she's also on. This is oh. the R E D I L L E. Yeah. So is this just a bait for late fees? Is it for Or is it for more than that? It was uh, brought up as the late fees to me, but I wasn't necessarily, I, I wouldn't necessarily swear that that would be the way it would manifest just because there's. There's some other history in there of um, some, I think, some 
challenges making the payments. So I'm not entirely sure what the final request would have been, but that was my understanding is that it would be late fees. I just don't want to be. Uh, it's really late fees and say fine. Yeah. Do that in your mind. I would try this out. Make a motion. I've moved to get the uh, request for paying the late fees for the place of Widow Avenue property. Exactly. All right. Any other discussion? This is just the uh, Woodrow Avenue. Yeah. And how much is it? Is it the same? No, 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 it is. Oh, Charlotte, what a good question. <laughs> it's so scary. <laughs> well, not with anybody. I'm thinking A payment. It could say the taxes. Yeah. Right. It says this this past fall. So I think yeah. we're talking about taxes, Jordan Kerman, tax leader. We're up to October, November. Clarify the motion that we yeah. pay the late fees only on current taxes. Uh, Any late fees that are extending as of today's date? Okay. Yeah, so if I put the good instructions, but we're straight to the voters, so that's what we're going to do. All right. Ready to vote on that? Or who was the second? Mm -hmm. on that? I'm sorry. I, I did. Okay. All those in favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Sorry. It's I, I'm voting no. Okay. Was it? I thought this is your suggestion. Maybe, maybe, but, uh, oh no, my, my suggestion wasn't this wasn't to talk about the case without her being here. Uh -huh. and, uh, just because it could be. Okay, let's go down. Uh starting with Tim again. We roll call. Yes. Charlotte. Yes. Sal. Sal. Yes. Yes. No. No. Donna, yes. Rosie, yes. Thank you. Kim? Yes. Um, Perry? No. Bob? Abstain. Okay. All right. The motion is passed, and uh, we can move on to, to the next one. Hi, Julia. Thanks for joining us. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you, uh, you can hear us okay? Yes. Great. Um, I'm going to ask you to raise your right hand. Do you solemnly affirm subject to the pains and penalties of perjury? The testimony you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. No. That's a yes. I don't think I don't know that I heard you, but, but okay. Yes. <laughs> Great, very good. Thank you. I think we've got some confusion about which one this is. This is there's two. Well, there's two names on it. Jill. Well, one of them is a personal property. Can I yeah. can I kind of explain? Because then maybe it will help you. So I am the owner of Capital Grounds Cafe in Montpelier. I do not own the building, but I own the business. I am also the owner of 7911 Langdon Street on Langdon Street, which is literally right behind the cafe. They are both commercial buildings, businesses. Um, this all came about because I was charged a late fee when I had my check in the mail and I, um, you guys cashed it two weeks later than it was due. And um, basically I was angry about it. It had to do with the, maybe the post office, but um, then it brought was brought to my attention that I haven't had the full use of my building or my business for over a third of last year, but I paid the full taxes on it and I paid taxes the whole time and then I got charged a penalty and that is now what I'm just bringing to light. Gotcha. So we we should take uh, the two. <laughs> they are separate, but yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> This is okay. new to me too. <laughs> a lot of people, this is a new to a lot of <laughs> experience to a lot of people this year. So I feel like um, it, this wouldn't have happened if I wasn't charged a late fee because I 
yeah, I, I pay everything on time. I'm, I'm embarrassed to say that it was not paid on time. So that's what made me uncomfortable with the situation. Anyway. Go. Okay, so start with the property first. Yeah, we'll start with the building. So we'll start with the uh, with the property at uh, Seven Langdon Street. Um, and what is that property? So it houses two commercial properties: the Get Up and J Langdon Antiques. Um, they were out of business and not operating in the months of July, August, September, October, and November. I did not collect rent uh, August, September, October, and November. Um, there are six apartments above. And while I had residence, we also have our laundry room on the main floor. Um, that was out of commission until January of 2024. And were the, uh, were the tenants in the apartments uh, paying rent continuously through the uh, period? But majority of them were not all because they had lost jobs and as both a tenant and a landlord i it was a rough year for everybody i think so i understood that people lost jobs um yeah so majority of our tenants but not all of them <clears throat> So we just quick but, point of clarification. I guess we have a question as to how many here, because what I have in our information is seven Langdon Street, and then an eight hundred uh, business a personal property claim for twenty seven State Street, but I don't have one for an additional nine Langdon Street. It is seven, nine, and eleven. It is all it's, one it's, business. It is all, all the same building. Yep, Which and it should. It's under seven, but it's all the same parcel is for entire two commercial, six apartments. I have my bill right here. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's okay. Okay. Sorry about the confusion. Um, now, uh, with, re with regard to the apartments, I, I asked about the rent, what I probably should have asked you, and we have a whole list of questions that I'm about to get to, but the apartments continue to be habitable after the flood, is that right? Yes. Okay. There was oh. one apartment on the second floor that was, um, she, my tenant did not live there for the month of July or August because, because the smell. And so I did not get rent for the month of July and August. Okay. <clears throat> I'm, I've got a list of questions that were asked. We've asked everyone who filed uh, abatement claims for flood damage. And so I'll just go through all of them with you. Um, first question is, was there 50% or greater loss of the value of the property? No. And did you lose, was there a loss of use of the primary structure for at least 60 days? Of the primary structure, yes. Okay. It's our main floor, yeah. And was there a loss of access to utilities for at least 60 days? No. Unless you uh, count laundry, but not, not really, no. <laughs> um, and was the, the property wasn't condemned, I assume, by the city? No. Okay. Um, no outbuildings or or land, right? No. Um, and you had an income loss. Yes. And um, it was roughly thirteen thousand dollars. Okay, and. Um, the uh, the square footage that was damaged is essentially the whole first floor. Is that accurate? Correct. About a, th a third of the building. Yes. <coughs> okay. Um, any other member have any other questions?
doesn't look like it. Okay, that's that. I think that gives us all the information we need to act on that uh, request, and then we can move right on to your 27 State Street uh, request. And am I right that this is solely a request relating to personal property? Yes, and I would just like to make a statement on that. Um, I am not requesting a refund. I am not requesting, like, I didn't get to use my business. I know we all had a really hardship. I am mainly asking for my late fee to be refunded. <laughs> that, that is the main like source of this on the 7911 Langdon Street building. Um, because I, so the property at Capitol Grounds is so minimal. I am not upset about it. When I wrote my letter of um, being upset about the late fee, um, she was like, oh, it looks like you also own property here. Um, I know that everyone has hardship. I am very capable of paying my property taxes for Capitol Grounds and it is, I, I don't even need to go there I, if, if you guys are willing to not go there. <laughs> I am happy to pay my whatever. We are totally willing to go there if you don't want to go. <laughs> uh, like, Capitol Grounds is standing strong. We will never go away. I am here to stay. Going strong. I was just there the other day, as you know. Um, what was so? What was the amount of the late fees? It was two hundred and sixty-seven dollars. It was minuscule, but it was enough to make me upset. One, because I never pay anything late. I have even paid all of my city of Montpelier taxes for Capital Grounds. Um, I was leaving town on. September 30th, and I put my check in the mail for the city of Montpelier, and you guys cashed my check that was due on October 2nd on the 17th. And then I got charged a late fee that I found about in November, in December, and that is what where this all came from. So I, it was, I can't even give you the exact amount, but I think it was like $267. 237, 267. I had it in front of me and I have lots of papers in front of me because I got nervous. <laughs> but okay, so Charlotte. If the personal property is only $162 that would forty. Is it on the personal property? No, it's on the Langdon Street address. Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, no request for anything regarding to the Capitol Grounds property? Nope. nope. Correct. And the only request regarding Langley Street 54 now is the late fee, which is 200 something. I make a motion that we abate the late fee. And I would second. And let the town figure out the exact amount. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Julie. Any, any discussion? We're sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was like, I was like, it really stinks that we don't have a post office. It I, I usually drop my check off and I was literally leaving town. And the fact that it didn't get cashed for almost three weeks was um, disgusting, kind of. We really need, I know this isn't the point of this, but we, we need a post office and it right. sucks. Right. <laughs> I don't know Julia well, but I've met her at my grandson's birthday party. Uh, <laughs> I just don't want to see everyone who's ever bought coffee or a roll yeah. there. That would cost me. We won't have more for sure. For sure. You know what I'm works there sometimes. I don't, yeah. I'm like, I don't I like do. making a huge deal, but I do not like anything being late. And I am very proud of, like, you know, and when I get a late fee, I'm mad about it, especially when it's not my fault. Totally. <laughs> All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, Bob, are you a, a yes or a no? That's a yes and I. Okay. okay, great. All right. Thanks for coming in. Um you so much. You, you're getting your late fee back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I hit open again. All right. Have a good night, you guys. <laughs>
Do you need a roll call? No. Nope. Oh, yes. We only need a roll call if if it's a split vote at these in these hybrid meetings. Yeah. So now we are to that point of the process that we've been working towards for months. Um, And we have all these forms. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Should I move to go into the river session? Is that the thing to do? Well, I guess, you know, we've we've been right, right along, we've been thinking we were going to be going into deliberative session. Uh, for this because we had been told, and I don't know even from where, that we would have the ability to go into deliberative session to uh, to discuss this. I haven't actually seen that in the statute, but I think it's fair to make a motion to go into deliberative session, but we may still need to come out of deliberative session to make the decisions. Always, always. Yeah. Yeah. Rosie. I'm just kind of curious if folks feel that we need to, because it, it might be more transparent since we're trying to be very fair and apply the same standard to everybody to not go into deliberative session. For them. But if there's anything that anybody would want to yep. <laughs> have yeah, that that's a good, that's for, then we're, we're, Well, there's a motion. There's not a second yet. Uh, what, what's your uh, pleasure? I'm fine to not go into deliberative Well, I mean, I just think it's, it would be more respectful of some of the circumstances and, and more free, free discussion to bounce around ideas that people can take offense to or not, and then come out of, out of the deliberate session and talk about our rationale and our final decision. That's all. But, so is that a second? It's a second. Okay. No, any, any other discussion on uh, John's motion? Okay. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? All right. We're in exactly we're in deliberative session. Okay, we are back in public session. Oh, excuse me, I, I have to leave now the session. I gotta go pick up a couple kids from elementary school. So okay. Thanks uh, for two thirty here in uh, New Zealand. So no. Um, okay. okay. Looks, the school goes a lot longer. Looks pretty. <laughs> looks pretty nice down there, Bob. Uh, we hope you're having a good time. See you later. Okay. Bye. Okay. Is and is there a motion? And would you, since I have this written up in a list would somebody like me to read this and then someone else would adopt it as their motion okay the uh, <clears throat> the decisions we've come to or the, or the conclusions we've come to in deliberative session are the following 93 for all of these we are that are where we're granting abatements we're uh, granting abatements for both the municipal and the education uh, taxes and 93 State Street, two quarters, 100 percent. 95 State Street, thank you for reading along to make sure I have it right, two quarters, 100 percent. 8 Langdon Street, two quarters, one third. 7 Baird Street, denied. 8 State Street, Two quarters, one third. Two State Street, two quarters, one third. 124 Main Street, two quarters, 100%. Seven Spring Street, denied. Seven. That one we already did. Okay. We already, did, we already yeah, denied it. Okay. It was, it was, so that should come out because that's not yes, going to be part done. of the motion. Okay. Yeah. 17 Deerfield. Denied, and that wasn't a pre previously acted on. Uh, Twenty six uh, Woodrow penalties abated. Four Fuller Street 
withdrawn. 118 Main Street, two quarters, 100%. 327 State Street, denied. 191 State Street, $1,933. 68 Main Street, two quarters, 100%. 148 State Street, $5,000. 26 St. Paul Street, denied. 24th Street, State Street, two quarters, 100%. You get that all right? We did a late, a late fee on 27 State Street. Oh. Okay, I don't think that earlier. No, yes. she asked it tonight. She asked, uh, but right, but we no, did we that tonight. We voted on that previously oh, in tonight's sorry. meeting, right? Thank you. Okay, does somebody want to make a motion incorporating those uh abatements? I'll make the motion to uh, have the abatements that just listed criteria that we used were um. That we made for just the first two quarters of the 2024 2025 tax year. We We also included that for multi level buildings that we only factored in the levels that were impacted, impact loss. Um, and it, um, a request was was for less. We honored the request from the taxpayer. Um, and we did not consider payments for basement space or below grade space. All right, is there a second? But, Any discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, we have acted on all the <laughs> yeah. All right, and we can now. Oh yeah, you should totally take a picture. We're now. <laughs> oh, there you go. That's better. We're in adjourn adjournment at eight thirty-five p.m.